Hello stock traders. I hope all of you had a fantastic New Year's holiday. In this video, I am going to cover seven stocks that should help to give you an edge over the market. Now, a lot of these stocks we have talked about in the past, but I'm going to give some updates on some of the different stocks that are very high conviction, at least with my research. Now, I am not a financial advisor. Of course, you need to do your own due diligence. I am a stock trader who has had a lot of success trading in the stock market. And to end 2021, I finished at a 185.28% gain. I feel that that is very good. That is mostly following my insider swing play, my PDUFA run-up play, and my dividend strategy that I have. And so it was a very, very good year. I hope all of you had a fantastic year. Also looking forward to 2022. And every single stock that I choose, I have a strategy for, and you need to have a strategy for every stock that you enter is so important. Now, if you don't have any strategies and you're just buying stocks because, oh, someone said the stock's going to go up. Well, that is not a strategy. You need to have a plan for how to enter, how to exit. And if you are interested in different strategies, I do have a Patreon group. And let's start this year off right and check it out. We have a link in the description down below. I think that you'd be very glad that you did. It does cost some money, but you get access to that discord with everything from the basic membership up and you will receive all of my due diligence on different stocks that I've looked at. And I give a reason for why I like it, different levels and an exit plan in each and every stock. Always have an exit plan. But before we get going in this video, if you could do me a favor, please hit that most amazing and wonderful like button. Also, if you have not done so before, please subscribe and turn on those bell notifications so you get notified when a new video comes out. Now this last week, I had eight out of 10 in our private Discord uh, stocks that were sold as part of the Insider Swing Play. We had a 80% uh, win rate with an average gain per pick of 1.77%. Over the last five years, that strategy has had a 70% win rate with an average gain per pick of 3%. But the percentages have been a little smaller, win rate a little higher this week. Um, you know, I'll take that. Uh, there's a couple stocks that we have within that insider swing play that are taking off and doing really, really well. So it's going to be really great. I will have a link of all those stocks that were sold this last week. If you are at all curious, Curious, I'll have a link in the description down below. PDUFA strategy only had one stock that sold, and that was OPK, sold it for a 23.84% gain. Hopefully, all of you got in on that, uh, had that listed in our top seven, but sold that this last week. Uh, it was a really nice, really nice trade. Had one long term pick that I need to report. It was from our dividend strategy and sold for a 25.27% gain, and that was JBL. That was a really great pick. Anyway, let's get to the stocks, the top seven list. I don't want to waste any of your time. Let's get right into it. And we start off with good old Safehold. I've been talking about Safehold for a long time. This is ticker symbol S-A-F-E. This is part of my insider swing strategy. I have two different price targets for this stock that are left that has not been that have not been hit yet. The first is $81. Uh, coming up here, you can see that this yellow line right here. So this is the support line right now on that has changed. And so this has moved up. So looking forward to $81 and beyond that, if we get past this resistance, most likely we will come back and touch it and then go towards $100 a share. I think that is my ultimate goal for this stock. And that is my ultimate price target for it. But we entered at $73.50 and it was way, way, way back here and it's gone up and down. We've been talking about this stock for a long time. Since calling this out, it's up 8.64%. Hopefully all of you got in on safe. It is a really great stock. I think it's got some more room to run. I think it's going to get past this level of 81 and I'd like to see it go up. I do have some exit strategies that some things that I'm a little concerned about and this is getting overheated on the daily chart. Um, so we will need to watch that if it gets too high. Uh, and iStar is continuing to buy shares, and so that continues to happen. iStar is a subsidiary, is an owner of Safehold, and they continue to load up shares. So the insider swing play, this insider activity has been happening day after day after day. And that's one of the reasons why the stock has had success, because it's got all this buying pressure behind it with the insiders. Okay, good. let's go to the next one. And number six is BitFarms, ticker symbol BITF. Now, this stock has done not that great. 
We've been trading this stock, at least I've been talking about it for the last nine months. Um, and so it's been a long time we've been talking about this. And first bought it and sold it for a nice 80% gain, then bought it and sold it again for a nice 30% gain. This time so far we're down 30.34% since I first called it out. And so it has not gone very well, but this is part of my value play. This is a longer term strategy that I have. And uh, this stock uh, does have support. As you can see these different levels, let's kind of cover and go over these levels. The first support level on this is uh, right at 468 or so. And if you bought at those levels, man, you are in a fantastic position on the stock. My personal average is $7.25. I paid too much and then it broke the support and has come down with how Bitcoin has not performed well over the lately. But I like this to get up to 675. That is the first level of resistance. And then once it hits that resistance and gets past it, then this becomes support. And then the next level up from that is $8.40. And then from that, uh, $20 a share is my long-term price target of this particular stock. Now, um, so I know it hasn't gone great so far, but BTC, Bitcoin, has just had a new higher low. And so as far as the technicals go, it appears that Bitcoin is going to be moving higher. There's a lot of support for it, and it continues to have high volume at these low levels right now. So I like that. That's very, very bullish. So I like Bitcoin to continue upwards, and this could be the beginning of a wonderful month. Now, here in a couple of weeks, BitFarm uh, CEO is going to come on and he's going to talk about how the company is done. Now, every time they talk about and update their mining numbers, this stock goes through the roof and I expect that to happen again. And so for those reasons, I like this as a long-term hold. Take a look at it, see what you think about it, but I like it. It is right here, very close to a uh, nice support level. There's another support level right here at 490. And so this is a great place to get in. There's a resistance level here at uh, right at $6. And so that is a nice move, a really nice 20% move. Really love to see that. And I think that can happen, especially as we hit this support level and with Bitcoin performing better. And it should can perform better over the long term. And that'll help the price of this particular stock. All right, let's move on to the next one. The next one is Eton Pharma, ticker symbol E-T-O-N. This is a PDUFA run-up play. My personal average on this is $3.99. So started talking about it uh, right at this right at this 399 level this was a great support level it started to get in on this and it's been moving upwards and bouncing against this 432 level and i've been talking about that my first target for this stock is four dollars and 33 cents and it's right there and if it could just get past it we can move and blast past this and get to the second target which is 507 so it's just right there. And if we get by this, watch out. They have a PDUFA date of January 29th. The FDA is going to make a decision upon the drug that they have up for approval, which is a very strong catalyst. Why? Because investors know that this is a solid date. The FDA is going to make a decision on this drug and they say, we're going to make a decision on this date. And so that is a very... Th good thing to run up to. The thing with the run-up strategy is you need a solid date to run up to, no matter what it is that you're running up to. And FDA approvals are very powerful if a stock gets approved for the price of a stock. So there's lots of investors, especially retail investors, that get in on this and play this strategy over and over and over again. Now, look for this to break 435, and if it does come down, Man, I would really be a buyer on that. I would buy even more shares right there. Why? Because now this resistance becomes support and we blast up to this next level. This happens over and over in the stock market. You always want to be a buyer at support and a seller at resistance. And so this still has that upcoming date. So I expect it to power through this. And so I don't think it will be very much longer before it moves up. My average and it's $3.99 since calling this out. It's up 7.35%. Here we go. Should be really good. All right, let's move on to number four. Number four is AGO. And this is AGOs. Uh, this is a PDUFA run-up play. They have a PDUFA date and FDA decision date on February 17th. And it's a priority review, which means the FDA has put this as a priority. So it is more likely that they will make a decision on it 
on priority review uh, PDUFAs. At least that is what I have found. They are less likely to get delayed. So my average in it is $32.30. And it's calling this out, it's only up 0 0.60. But this is a very important support line. It's right at 32.30. And that's the reason why I paid um, why I paid that and it moved up here to resistance and then got kind of got rejected here and has come back down to support. Well, this is a great place to load in my opinion. I really like this to not break this level and should continue upwards, especially with that PDUFA date coming up. And since calling this out up 0.60%, so it's not like uh, the people in the private discord have made that much. So if you're watching this on YouTube, this is a great opportunity to get in on a great stock and be in for the run-up strategy. So it should really be great. All right, let's move on to the next one. And this stock has been so phenomenal. This is an insider swing play. This is MediaCo, ticker symbol MD. IA. And so this is a cheaper stock. Some might say, oh, too risky, Ray. Well, yes, it's risky, but it's had insider activity. So insider activity takes the risk away. In my opinion, I've just traded this strategy so much that it is so successful. Um, so I bought in on this a couple weeks ago and sold it for a nice gain. And then <laughs> bought in again on insider activity again, made money on it so I didn't have to worry about a wash sale or the wash sale rule. So anyway, my average in this is $4.65. Since calling this out, it's up 15.05%. Now you might say, wow, this is up 15.05%. Well, I don't wanna buy this. Well, this is really not the level of support anymore. See, what's happened is this has climbed so much that it climbed above this level of resistance and now came back down to this level. So what does that mean? Most likely that means that we are moving up to our next price target of $6.30 and then beyond that we have $7.20 and then beyond that watch out man this thing could get very very hot this is a low float stock which means it can really move and it can move on very little volume it's crazy the swings on this and so if anyone is short on this they're going to start panicking if this goes up anymore really like this because now it's at a support level so if you're looking to buy a stock um, I think that this is a good deal it lowers your risk a little bit. Now, if it breaks down below this, then you will want to consider uh, if, if we come down to 510, you would want a stop loss right around there. That would be bad news for the stock. That would mean that we're coming down to the support and retesting it again. And uh, that would not be uh, great, but I don't expect that to happen. There's been lots of insider activity, lots of excitement, and it doesn't take a lot for the stock to move upwards. And so that's why I like it and have made a lot of money on it so far. But we are right at a support level, in my opinion. So you can make some money on it rushing up to that resistance level. All right, let's go to number two. And number two, oh, number two was such a dud. I talked about this on Friday morning's video, and this is Kubiant, ticker symbol KBNT. This is an insider swing play, and this one has not paid off yet. I say yet. I really like this insider activity, and I feel that the stock is extremely undervalued. My average in it's $3.12. I bought no man's land, which I don't like to do. In between support and resistance, I bought there. And what did it happen? It came all the way back down to support. But what I thought was going to happen is after the insider activity is that we were going to break this resistance level at $3.30, but it has not happened yet. And so that is the next price target. Support is at $3.00. Resistance is at 330, first resistance, and then second resistance at 347. We get past that. Woo, watch this thing go. It could really move. Uh, my average is $3.12. and since calling us out is down 3.06%. This is very, very undervalued stock. In my opinion, analysts have an average price target on this of $9 a share. And I know that's Zacks and they tend to be a little crazy with their price targets, but Mythic Capital, uh, what a fantastic buy. Mythic Capital is a 10% owner of Kubiant and they bought right at $3. I applaud them. They bought at support. That is so wonderful. And so I like that transaction whenever I see that. And so that was the excitement here. Um, but it did not respond well throughout the day. Uh, this stock has not done well through the year. So it's my theory that a lot of investors in Kubiant 
decided to sell it on the last day of the month and take their losses and count it against their taxes because this one was so far down. Well, now we don't have to worry about that. Now we're in the first of the year. We should see some buying. We should see some volume going in on this stock. All right, let's go to number one. Number one was a phenomenal call out. And here's another reason why you need to be in at least the basic discord. I made this call out on Friday morning and it was fantastic. Most people were able to buy this that were in our group about 1% down in pre-market. Um, very, very bullish insider activity. And I'm going to talk about that more here in just a moment. Uh, but this is an insider swing play. My next price target for this is, believe it or not, 35 bucks. Why? Well, we got this gigantic gap and gaps have a tendency to fill. And this has insider activity loading right here. Such a wonderful buy by director Ronald Daniels. Did such a terrific purchase. He bought shares at $12.73 and bought shares at $14.34. And now that that's been reported in the Form 4s with the SEC, this shows a lot of confidence by this director to go in on the stock. And this gives me confidence to now buy into it. Okay, so here is uh, the reason why I liked it is because it was right at a support level. Uh, and so I knew the insider activity would cause it to break, or excuse me, at the time when it hit this and the insider activity was reported, it was right at a resistance level. And I had good feeling that this was gonna cause it to break that resistance. And that's exactly what we got. Um, we got a quick move up. Uh, in pre-market came right back down on this and just broke on through. Okay, so now that we've broken on through, uh, there's not really anything stopping it all the way up here. Now, this stock is heavily shorted um, and it is way oversold. You can see down here 30 on the RSI, just a fantastic buy. This is still a great buy. It's at 30 on the RSI now. When we bought in on Friday, it was right at 24 on the RSI, which is really terrific with insider activity. After Ronald Daniels buying, I really think that this thing is going to be a monster and a monster gainer. So love this movement here. Um, we are not even close to a MACD Golden Cross. We've got a MACD Golden Cross. That would be another catalyst to take us up here. We're so far away from overbought levels that this stock is a terrific value. And that's why I have it number one. I wish all of you the best in 2022. Again, have a strategy for the stocks that you buy. And for the stocks that you don't have a strategy that you buy, please track your trades. Really take a look at it and be analytic and go, did that work? Did buying the company because... My brother-in-law said that this could go crazy. Did that work? Did buying a short squeeze like GME or, um, you know, whatever, without a plan, uh, buying GameStop, did that actually work? Track it. Take a look at it. Put it on paper. And then be analytical about all the trades that you made. And if you're making mistakes and you're losing money in the stock market, stop doing those things. Learn something new. Anyway, I wish you all the best in 2022. Let's have a fantastic year in Raytoven out.